continue with our lesson one on algebra called solving linear equations in one variable, notice that we now have decimals in our equations. And in order to solve these equations, you first want to get rid of the decimals. And there's some techniques in order to do that. So if you look at our first example, notice that we have one decimal place here, no decimal places there, and one decimal place there. So to get rid of decimals, the best thing to do is to multiply times 10 or 100 or 1,000 to get rid of the number of decimal places we're dealing with. In this case, since there's only one decimal place, we want to multiply both the left and the right side equation by 10, because that will get rid of all the decimal places here. So when we do that, the 10 will distribute over the 0.5x and with the 2. So 10 times 0.5 gives you 5x, and 10 times 2 gives you plus 20, equals 10 times 0.3x gives you 3x. And now you follow the normal procedures, move all the terms that have an x to the left side, all the terms with the numbers to the right side, which means we end up at 5x minus 3x. Remember, when you cross the equal sign, the sign changes. So the plus 20 becomes minus 20 on the right side, 5x minus 3x, we now combine the like terms, so this is 2x equals minus 20, divide both sides by the numerical coefficient from the x, that disappears, and x equals minus 20 divided by 2 is minus 10. When we now look at our second example, we notice that there's one decimal place here, one decimal place there, but two decimal places there. So in this case, we're going to have to multiply both sides by 100. You always find the, the number with the greatest number of decimal places and then multiply both sides of the equation accordingly. So in this case, we're going to multiply the left side by 100. We're going to multiply the right side by 100. Like so. so when we distribute that over those two terms, distribute this over these two terms, what do we get? So 100 times 2.4x is 240x. 100 times minus 2 is minus 200 equals 100 times negative 0.6x is minus 60x. And 100 times 32 is, um, uh, point 0.32 is plus 32. Now the next step is to move all the terms with the x to the left side, all the terms without the x to the right. So this moves to the left, this moves to the right. Again, remember when you cross the equal sign, you have to change the sign of the term. So this becomes 240x plus 60x equals 32 plus 200. When we cross the equal sign, combining like terms on both sides, this becomes 300x equals 232, and so x is equal to, let me write it out because it's better that way, divide now both sides by the number in front of the x, so divide by 300, divide by 300, this cancels out, so x is equal to 232 divided by 300. Now, we can probably simplify that, because both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator, are even, that means they can be divided by 2, so we can write x is equal to 116 over 150, Notice they're both still even, so we could still divide by 2, so x is equal to 58 divided by 75. At this point, they're no longer divided by 2, divisible by 2, and wonder if they're divisible by 3. Well, 75 is, but 58 is not. So now we're getting to the point where we probably cannot simplify this any further, so we'll just leave it at that. Finally, going to our last example, notice that we have one decimal place here, two decimal places there, two decimal places there, and three decimal places there, which means we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by a thousand. So multiply the left side by a thousand, multiply the right side by a thousand. Okay, when we do that, we distribute the 1,000 over every term inside the parentheses here. We multiply the 1,000 over both terms inside the parentheses there, and let's see what we get. 1,000 times 0.1x becomes 100x, 1,000 times this becomes plus 20x equals. 1,000 times this becomes 1 to 50 minus 1,000 times this becomes minus 8x. At this point, we're ready to move all the terms with the x to the left side, all the terms without the x to the right side. So here we get 100x plus 20x, and then we move the minus x over, that becomes a plus 8x. Notice this goes across the equal sign and the sign changes. The 50 stays on the right. 
we can now combine all like terms. So this is 128x is equal to 50. So x is equal to, and again, I'm getting a little lazy here. I shouldn't do that. I should write that I divide both sides by the number in front of the x, like so. So you can see that that cancels out. x is now equal to 50 divided by 128. Again, both the numerator and denominator are even. That means they can be divided by 2. So x is equal to 25 divided by 64. At this point, I don't think they have a common factor, so that's about as low as I can go. And there's the answer. And that's how you solve equations when in one variable when they're linear, but they have decimal places. So that's how you solve these types of equations. All right, that's the end of our lesson number one. Now I look forward to lesson number two.